Check this out. Whenever I download anything, I can see the progress right around my camera hole punch. It's seamless, doesn't get in the way, and shows up no matter what screen I'm on. Or I can instead switch to this linear progress bar that slides across the top of the screen. The app that makes this possible is Nodi Progress Bar. It costs a dollar, but I just dropped a ton of promo codes for it on my Patreon so that you can download it for free. Here's another useful one. Whenever I'm inside an app and I'm unsure what a word means, I can just long press it, tap the three dots in the contextual menu, and select meaning. From there, the definition will appear as a notification, so I don't need to leave my current app. It's way better than that in Google, because Google makes you leave the current app you're on just to define a word, which is pretty annoying. If you're interested, Notification Dictionary is the app that makes this happen, and it's completely free. Also, if you enjoyed this quick style video where I jump straight into the action with no silly intro, a quick thumbs up will show me to continue this. Thanks guys. I'm sure 99% of you use Google Maps, because it's the GOAT. But it still lacks a simple feature. It won't give you the fastest path when adding multiple stops to your destination. For example, if I just have a simple destination like going to JFK Airport from the Empire State Building, it'll have no problem showing me the fastest route. But when I start to add even more addresses like going to Central Park, then stopping by Yankee Stadium, and ending up at Hell's Kitchen, Google Maps won't reorder these stops to obtain the quickest path. It'll just pile everything up and make you drive all over the map. And that's fine if you need to drive to those spots in that specific order, but when you instead want to save money and time, the shortest path is usually the best. Well, with Rutora, it can automatically rearrange those stops to find you the fastest route. You just type in the places you want to go, and it'll automatically rearrange them. It works flawlessly. And I can easily send that path to Google Maps with the touch of a button. Works like a charm. Another huge annoyance is that if you're using an Android or a PC to share a file with an iPhone, you probably already know it's almost impossible. I mean, Apple does not play nice outside of its ecosystem. Luckily, you can use PairDrop to easily share files between all platforms, even iOS. And you don't even need to download anything because it's a website, PairDrop.net. Once you're on it, on both phones, you can hit the link in the top right corner and then type either code within the other device to make a permanent connection. After you hit pair, you should see the other device pop up. You can select it to share any file. It transfers extremely fast, has no ads, and is entirely free to use. Plus, it's open source. And by the way, the setup process is a one-time thing, so after you permanently connect two devices, they'll always automatically connect in the future, even if you refresh or close the page. And I know some of you are going to say that it looks and works just like SnapDrop, but PairDrop provides a few more advantages. Like, it can connect with devices outside your Wi-Fi network, you can send multiple files to be downloaded in a single zip file, change your display name, and more. Plus, I really haven't been able to get SnapDrop to work in a while, so PairDrop is definitely the better choice here. This past week, I found the best way to have my Pixel Watch match my smartphone's lock screen, and all I did was download this watch base called Pixel Watch 2 Base 1. It looks just like this lock screen clock released in Android 14. It even lets me change the color to match my phone correctly. Plus, I love that it allows me to add complications to the outer edge to quickly glance at the time, weather, active zone minutes, and more. My favorite part is that when the watch switches to the always-on display, the clock's font also switches to an outline look, just like on my phone. It's a pretty marvelous watch face. The only downside is that it does cost a dollar, but luckily I just dropped 50 promo codes on my Patreon so that you can get this app for free. I also like this other watch face called Digital Material U1, Created by the same developer, it's like having all the Material U widgets and elements on the Google Pixels available as a watch face. Or even this watch face called Nothing Watch 2.0, which is themed, just like those clean widgets found within the Nothing Phone 2. The developer thought of everything, and it's a really great way to have your smartwatch match your phone. More promo codes for both of those watch faces can also be found on my Patreon. I'm sure most of you have probably never edited a video outside of maybe trimming down a clip or adding filters, and I get it. Using a video editor is not easy. But I just came across a newly released one called The Box, and it lets you do individual video editing tasks, making the job 100 times easier and quicker. For instance, 
if you just want to add music to a video you recorded, Vox lets you do that. If you want to reverse a clip, you can as well. Maybe compress it down so that it's a smaller size. Modify its volume. Add a watermark to it. Change its speed. It's pretty much all there as individual tasks instead of dealing with a complicated timeline. And you can also do the same thing with any audio file. Trimming it, converting it, merging, changing its speed, etc. The best part is that it's free, has no ads or in-app purchases, so it's a true gold mine. The Snack Stamp is only for my Samsung users, so if you don't have that, skip to the next timestamp. It's called Galaxy Max Hertz, and it allows you to modify the refresh rate in various ways. On some phones, I can change the refresh rate per app. So for some apps that only work at 60 Hertz, like Google Maps, I can force it to be used at 120 Hertz, and it feels so much smoother. It unfortunately doesn't work with every app, but it's still worth a shot. On top of that, I can modify the overall refresh rate, like I can lower it from 120 Hertz to 96 to save some battery life, or when the battery life is extremely low, I can force the refresh rate to automatically lower to an adaptive rate of 10 to 24 Hertz instead of just being at 60. That'll truly extend every last drop. I can also have a constant refresh rate instead of being adaptive, which will provide a way smoother experience, but at the cost of your battery life. There are a ton more features where that came from. Also, if you're running One UI 6, you'll need to sideload it using an ADB command. You can't just install it straight from your phone. And for every device, the only way to enable these features is to use an ADB command. All the instructions can be found on the GitHub page linked down below. Switching to the games, first up we have Super Dash. It's a high speed endless runner game that anyone can pick up and start playing. In fact, I'm sure you can probably guess how the controls work just by looking at the gameplay. You swipe left or right to switch paths and swipe up to jump. But even though it's a simple concept, it's still somewhat addicting. As you continue to race through the track, your speed starts to pick up, so your gestures and reflexes are really tested. Because one wrong move, and you're flying off the road or running into an object. I even like that it has a daily leaderboard, so that you can try to beat other players' scores, and try to put your name in the top 10 so that everyone can see who's the champion. The graphics are what also really caught my attention. It's very eye-catching and has the perfect techno music to go along with it. I just couldn't play it in this video, just in case it's copyrighted. It's also completely free, so why not give it a shot? Another casual game that I enjoy playing that carries even better graphics is Grand Bell R. It's somewhat of a popular game, but I wanted to show it off anyways, cause for one, some of you probably haven't heard of it. But two, I just don't see enough games nowadays fully taking advantage of our powerful processors. As I played through this Metrovania title, I could tell that it made me feel like this is how modern mobile games should feel with eye-catching graphics and smooth gameplay. It's even got the perfect amount of action where you're slicing through monsters in a medieval looking castle or scary dungeon. I will say that the game can get a bit repetitive at times since you're just spamming a single button to combat the enemies, but it gets a lot more challenging and exciting when you reach higher levels. You can even use the dodge button a lot more often to get around large hordes of monsters or even climb the walls to, to make sneak attacks. Plus, there are boss fights which are never a cakewalk. It's a pretty casual game with amazing graphics, just don't expect any crazy surprises. What does provide a lot more surprises is Dear Vengeance. At its core, it's another platformer game with run and jump controls. But things get really interesting when the AI storyteller turns into this evil machine that makes the map full of surprises. Like the floor starts to glitch and disappear, and the environment gets a lot creepier. It almost feels like a troll game because they make the coins and treasures death traps, or there are even instances of a long empty space where you're expecting a jump scare but it never happens, leaving you with a sense of dread. I don't want to spoil it too much, but you should definitely try it out, especially if you're into horror games. It's free to download too. Anyways, click this video right here where I show off even more apps to enable those new iOS features from within the iPhone 15. Also, if you download at least one app from this entire video, all I ask is if you can please drop a thumbs up. It really helps with the channel. Thanks so much for watching till the end, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!